Hello, everyone. I hope I'm audible. So I would like to thank the organizers for giving me this wonderful opportunity to share my research work. So today I'm going to speak about uh, modified gravity in stellar physics. So this is the overview of my talk, where we note that modified gravity theories alter the hydrostatic equilibrium conditions. And hydrostatic equilibrium conditions are crucial to have the analytical formulas for the stellar observables like mass, radius, and luminosities. Therefore, one can put constraints on these modified gravity theories by comparing the modified predictions with the astrophysical observables. However, we do know that stellar and substellar objects uh, exhibit anisotropies because of several reasons, like rotation, magnetic fields, and such anisotropies also alter the hydrostatic equilibrium condition. Therefore, we would like to study the implications of modified gravity theories as well as anisotropies on the stellar and substellar objects. So out of different kinds of modified gravity theories, one of the most popular and widely studied ones are the scalar tensor theories, where the scalar field is non-minimally coupled to gravity. And these scalar tensor theories can be broadly classified into three categories, with the degenerate higher order scalar tensor theories, abbreviated as TOST, being the most general one. And we will be considering these TOST theories for our analysis, where the Lagrangian takes this particular form, where this is the non-minimal coupling appearing here. And Weinstein mechanism is one of the promising screening mechanism in these uh, scalar tensor theories, where for a given astrophysical object, there exists a characteristic radius beyond which the modifications in the gravity because of scalar fields are present, while uh, within this radius, the modifications are completely screened, thereby recovering Einstein's general theory of relativity. And it has been uh, validated through extremely precise experiments. However, uh, inside astrophysical objects, such modifications are not screened, which results in this modification of the pressure balance equation with this additional term. And upsilon is the modified gravity parameter, which uh, quantifies the deviation from standard gravity. However, if we take account of stellar pressure anisotropy, where the radial pressure is not equal to the tangential one, then the pressure balance equation gets further modified by an additional anisotropy term. We consider the following uh, phenomenological model for this anisotropy term, with tau being the anisotropy parameter, which tunes the strength of anisotropy. Now, as a first step, we uh, try to study the implications of both modified gravity and anisotropy on very low mass objects, which can evolve into either brown dwarfs or very low mass stars, depending upon whether its mass is less than or higher than a particular value called the minimum mass of hydrogen burning, which is abbreviated as the MMHP. And its value stands out to be 0 0.08 uh, solar mass in the uh, isotropic Newtonian case. However, we find that for positive values of the anisotropy and modified gravity parameters, we obtain uh, brown dwarfs having mass higher than this value, and we refer to them as overmassive brown dwarfs. And the lowest mass main sequence stars being observed actually could put some upper bound on the modified gravity parameter. The plot here you see is the variation of the minimum mass of hydrogen burning with the modified gravity parameter, and the different colors correspond to different values of the anisotropy parameter. We also study their implications on white dwarfs, where we have obtained white dwarfs having mass higher than the Chandrasekhar mass limit of 1.4 for positive values of the anisotropy and modified gravity parameters. And this is important in the light of the fact that recent observations of superluminous type 1 supernova do indicate that there exist super Chandrasekhar white dwarfs. Although I was uh, speaking to Joseph last day, and he was saying that uh, this observation is it, it still needs more data to actually conclude this uh, statement, actually. Anyways, we have obtained these things not from any uh, uh, like binary systems, but this is uh, for a lone white dwarf. We also consider modified gravity in the composite stellar structure models, uh, having distinctive core envelope structure, having an intermediate hydrogen burning shell. Such a model is relevant for low mass stars in their turn off point, which corresponds to the shell hydrogen burning phase. And from our numerical analysis, we obtain that with an increase in the modified gravity parameter, the overall gravity weakens, therefore the stellar radius increases with a decrease in the luminosity and the effective temperature. However, we also see that near the core, with an increase in upsilon, the gravity strengthens. 
Therefore, the core radius decreases with an increase in the temperature and the pressure at the core envelope uh, junction. Now, this seemingly counterintuitive uh, results can be explained through this rule of thumb, where this first term on inside the square bracket is actually dominates uh, very close to the center, and for positive upsilon values, this therefore strengthens gravity. However, far away from the center, this term is negative, and it starts dominating over the first, and therefore, for positive upsilon values, we have a weakening of gravity. However, this is still a rule of thumb. One needs to solve the entire stellar structure equations to obtain these results. Now, uh, this shell hydrogen burning phase continues up till point three, which uh, when the core mass fraction reaches the maximum limit, which is called the schonberg chandrasekhar limit, beyond which the core can no longer withstand the pressure of the overlying envelope. And uh, we obtained a master formula for this uh, schonberg chandrasekhar limit in the presence of modified gravity theories and anisotropies. And we found that positive values of these parameters leads to decrease in the schonberg chandrasekhar limit while uh, negative values of these uh, results in an increase of the limit. Now, one of the immediate uh, physical consequence of the change in the schonberg chandrasekhar limit would be the time spent by the star in the shell hydrogen burning phase. Uh, so far, all the results that I have described and discussed were under the approximation of spherical symmetry, which uh, gets broken if we consider a considerable amount of rotation. So here we try to develop uh, an analytic formalism to incorporate slow rotation in modified gravity theories. This was done in collaboration with Anita, who spoke just before me. So here we consider the modified mechanical uh, equilibrium equations with the centrifugal terms. We also consider the modified Poisson's equation with this correction term appearing because of any modified gravity theories in general. And from this, we obtain this modified Lenemden equation containing the correction terms both due to rotation and mo uh, modified gravity theories. Now, following the formalism of Chandrasekhar for rotating polytropes after doing uh, some amount of algebra, we obtain this complete analytic form of the solution, and this component functions uh, satisfies these uh, differential equations with the given boundary conditions. I won't go into the details of this. Finally, I would like to also mention that we have studied rapid uniform rotation in very low mass objects, where we have obtained this transition mass range which says that a given uh, very low mass object with a given angular rotation speed can evolve into the main sequence phase provided its mass lies within this particular range. Now, because of the opposing behavior of the two extreme limits uh, with an increase in omega, as can be seen from this plot, this, uh, we obtain an upper, uh, theoretical upper limit on this uh, rotation parameter, uh, which corresponds to a rotation period of uh, 22 minutes. And here goes the summary. I would rather take questions. So with this, I would like to thank you all. Thank you very much. Other questions? Yes, I see one in the very um, last row, or second to last row. So I have two questions. The first is about constraints on this from the sun. Uh, the the gravitational potential there should be adequate to test these using solar neutrinos. What, what are the constraints on these theories from that? And the second question is related to your comment about the maximum mass of white dwarfs. Is, this is there a way to get this mechanism to act on just a few objects, not all objects? OK, regarding, uh, I would uh, rather take the second question first. So. Yeah, so are you asking that if this mass, uh, is, is the increase in mass valid only for the white dwarfs or can it happen for other class of stars? Is it that what you are asking? We know that the formation of a neutron star requires a large class of white dwarf-like objects to collapse. <laughs> so whatever mechanism you have to make more massive stars must have an ingredient that's not present in every star. So if you invoke magnetic fields, I can accept that as a possible explanation. But you are invoking what appears to be a mechanism that should operate everywhere. Yes, exactly. So isn't that a contradiction already? How uh, can you have a two solar mass white dwarf uh, uh, I, and neutron stars? Uh, I haven't worked with neutron stars specifically, but uh, this formalism is quite general. 
So you can possibly uh, apply this to any class of stars. And as you mentioned correctly, yes, these kinds of uh, overmassive or supermassive white dwarfs are also obtained if we take the equation of state corresponding to the high magnetic fields inside these uh, stars. That is also there. So there is always a kind of uh, different degeneracies that appear if we take account of different uh, aspects. But here we just consider this uh, modified gravity theories. And I think it should fairly work with the neutron stars as well. But if you are talking about the formation thing, then it goes, uh, uh, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I do not have a conclusive answer for that. And what was your first question, by the way? Uh, Solar neutrinos, I mean, we heard from your talk in the previous talk that basic thermodynamics, phase space, a lot of these things change. So I'm guessing the nuclear reactions, the tunneling rate, everything changes. But yes, we know yes. a lot about the solar interior from solar neutrinos. Yes, How yes, does that constrain yes, yes. this? Th that is actually in our plans to actually incorporate the modified equations of states and uh, see about that. Actually, yeah, that is there. But here we have not uh, taken account of the modified equations of states. Yeah. Uh, the answer for this neutrino stuff and so on, yes, the, the ratios are, are different in modified gravity. There's not very big difference, but it, has, uh, it can have a quite significant effect for the ages of the object. So generally, modified gravity accelerates uh, the evolution of, of those objects, and I think like of every star. And please, uh, careful, this is, uh, I mean, this is the Lehmann equation with polytrope, which is like, too simple equation of state to describe white dwarf. So don't be very attached to those numbers you can obtain from that because you need to include a lot of uh, other things uh, to, I mean, to describe a white dwarf. Not this is just a toy model and then you go deeper and study and also the sun. Um, I mean, this particular model is already quite well constrained uh, by a solar physics. Uh, there's a paper by uh, Ileana Lopez and um, Hippocratus Saltas uh, regarding uh, asteroid seismology and this model, how you can, but still there are a lot of things which we don't like no, in that paper, so. All right, I think we need to move on. So let's give a big applause to our speaker again. Thank you very much.